Hi guys and welcome to U Wrench. Today we're working on the Grand Caravan. This is the 2008 through 2020 model. That also applies to the Chrysler Town and Country. And today we're going to be doing a full rear brake rotor and pad change. Let's do it. So first things first, uh, if you've not done much work on your own brakes before, you might find it a little bit of a daunting prospect. However, it's not something you should be afraid of. This is quite a simple uh, thing to do, and the brake system on my car is, is actually fairly simple, especially when it comes to the actual uh, caliper and carrier ends, which is what you're going to be working on, changing your rotors and pads. So don't worry about it. It is quite simple. You can do it yourself. Just follow along with the video, and we'll give you lots of tips and tricks along the way, but you can do it, and by doing it yourself, not only will it be rewarding, but you're going to save yourself a lot of money down the road as well. So follow along, and let's get it done. So stage number one, before we actually jack the car up, what we're going to do is we're going to slacken off the uh, wheel nuts. Uh, literally just half a turn on each of these wheel nuts. And the reason that you do that whilst the weight is still on the wheel is that whilst the weight's still on there, you can actually uh, turn these off. Whereas if you lift the car and then try and undo them when they're really, really tight, what it tries to do is it tries to actually turn the whole wheel. So it's easier when the weight's on the car, just slacken these off and, and then we'll raise the car and you'll be able to get these off really easy. So next we're going to jack up the corner of the car that you're going to be working on. The best place to find uh, detailed information on the correct jacking points for the car is in the owner's manual that came with your car. They always include very detailed instructions in there. So take a look at that uh, if, you, if you struggle and don't know where the jacking points are located. Now one important thing to remember, and this is especially important if your car has a manual transmission, is as you are jacking up the uh, rear of the car, the front of the car, uh, if it's a neutral, can uh, roll backwards and forwards. So what you want to do is place a, a chock of some kind, uh, maybe a, a block of uh, wood, uh, either side of your front wheel, just to make sure that you're jacking it safely and the front of that car can't move backwards and forwards. Especially important, if you, of course, if you have a manual transmission. So before we get stuck in, let's take a look at the kind of basic um, components that we have here and, and how it works. And the actual rear caliper itself is this, this section in the middle with these two arms right here. And as we can see, this is a single caliper piston, uh, as is often the, usually the case on the rears. And there's the uh, piston within this rubber boot here. The piston goes directly onto uh, one of the brake pads which is here, you've got your backing material and your face material, that's, that's your uh, pad number one. And in the middle of that, that's actually your brake disc. And the second side of that, that's gonna be your, your, other, your other brake pad right there. And on the outside of this, we actually have uh, this, this kind of frame that comes all the way up around the outside. So, around, so you've got the caliper in the middle, and you've got this frame around the outside and that's your carrier uh, also known as your uh, caliper bracket that's what actually kind of um, the, the pads the brake pads as you'll see when we get a little bit further down the line they actually sit uh, inside this bracket and the caliper itself and the piston they actually squeeze squeeze those pads and release those pads uh, as you press the uh, the brake pedal now the ways that the uh, that these are connected together is we have uh, you can see at the top just here uh, we've got these little uh, bolts here. These are quite short, they're only about so long. And that connects the uh, caliper through into the carrier. We actually have slider pins uh, that move backwards and forwards that allow that, uh, that squeezing motion. They don't actually squeeze like this, they actually squeeze like this. One, this side stays stationary. So these slider pins, we'll show you these as we get further into it. So you have uh, one bolt there and a matching one uh, just at the bottom there. And that's what holds the um, caliper onto the carrier. Now the carrier is connected uh, directly onto the, uh, the hub of the car. And you've got two um, bigger, chunkier uh, bolts. Uh, again, one at the top and uh, there will be another uh, down at the bottom there as well. Uh, moving on to the uh, rear of the caliper. This is for the, uh, the handbrake here. You can see we've got a little uh, arm on a spring and we've got a handbrake um, uh, cable 
right here and has like a little eye on it. We're not going to be doing anything with that today but that's what that is. And finally uh, coming off of the rear of the caliper we have this uh, flexi uh, brake line right here and attached to the brake line we have the, uh, the ABS uh, sensor as well. So that is the, uh, the basic setup of everything we're going to be working on today. So let's crack on. So next up is a good idea to put a little bit of penetration fluid onto the uh, bolts before you try and remove them. Uh, that will just work its way uh, into it and help slacken them off a little bit. Uh, it can really help if you end up uh, with uh, some uh, stubborn bolts. It can be the difference between getting them off and rounding them off. So it's well worth doing. If you haven't got a dedicated um, uh, dismantling lubricant, uh, as they call it, you can uh, you can use a bit of WD-40. It's not as good as the uh, as the, the proper stuff. Loads of brands do a, a similar type of product, uh, but WD-40. Uh, if you've got nothing else, it's definitely better than nothing. Now, if you have uh, an ABS uh, sensor uh, which is attached to the uh, your flexi hose of your uh, caliper, as we have here. Good idea, just before we get stuck in, just to pop out the, uh, the two little grommets and just set that safely uh, out of the way. So next up, we're gonna remove the, uh, the upper and lower bolts that connect the uh, caliper through into the carrier. Uh, so what we're gonna do is grab the, uh, the correct size uh, socket uh, on the Grand Caravan we're working on today. It's a half inch and we're gonna get these removed. Now, uh, one thing to um, uh, bear in mind when you're undoing these is where uh, the bolt passes through into the uh, centre of the pin here. Sometimes, as you can see here, both are trying to turn together. They sometimes, I mean, I'm just holding that with my fingers, but sometimes they can be very, very uh, tight together and you'll be turning this and, and you won't be able to stop this turning. If that's the uh, case, what you can do, obviously, is just get the uh, correct size spanner and just slot that down on there and that will allow you to counter hold that as you remove the bolt from the rear. So there you go, that's what your bolts look like. Uh, but as we've still got one more to remove, what I'm going to do is just put that back in, give it a couple of turns by hand, uh, because if you don't, when you go to uh, undo the other one, the whole uh, um, caliper can start to lift away, so it's just for safety. So next up, I'm going to grab yourself a big uh, flathead screwdriver or a pry bar and we're just going to uh, pry the uh, caliper away from the carrier. So this should literally just slide off of the brake pads. Very important to note that, of course, by this stage you should not have your handbrake engaged. If you have your handbrake on, this literally won't move at all. So make sure your handbrake is disengaged and let's get to getting this removed. So very important, what you don't want to do is just leave this to hang because obviously you've got your, uh, your nice uh, flexi hose at the back there and if you uh, start hanging weight off of this caliper you could uh, damage your flexi hose. So what you want to do is you want to find a point where you can uh, safely um, tie this up. As you see on, this, uh, on the Grand Caravan here, uh, we have a little point there so I think I'm just going to put a cable tie through there and just hold it up there. But again you could uh, tie it up to the uh, to the, uh, the spring there. Anyway, you can tie it up just so you're not putting all the weight uh, on this cable. So next up, we're gonna get rid of the old pads. As you can see, they're not particularly uh, healthy on this car. Give them a bit of a, a tap, top and bottom, just enough to get the pry bar in. 
his uh, discs obviously have been, his rotors have been replaced today, so I'm not too, uh, not too worried about them. Uh, but that's all that you do, is you just rock them backwards and forwards, and uh, that, as you can see, that's the old pad removed. As you can see, these pads are really uh, well stuck in there, so these really can't have been very uh, healthy at all. Hopefully yours won't get stuck in like, like these have. Uh, but it goes to show you how bad uh, the brakes can get because these should be uh, free to slide backwards and forwards and they're jam solid. Now on the basis of what I've just seen with the uh, condition of these brakes, I'm predicting the uh, rotor is going to be very, very hard to remove from the hub. I think it's going to be some corrosion uh, in around here, maybe in behind it as well, so it could be an absolute nightmare. So I'm going to put some more of my penetration spray, I'm just going to cover the, uh, the centre. Give that a few minutes to uh, soak in whilst I move on to the uh, to the next stage. Hopefully that will work its way down in there and just make cracking that off uh, that much easier when we get to that stage. Fingers crossed. So before we move the carrier, uh, once we do that, in theory the uh, brake rotor is free. And so, potentially, I don't think it's going to on this particular car because uh, we do have uh, quite a lot of corrosion. I think it's going to be difficult to come off, uh, but that could be free from the hub. And so once this is removed, the disc could potentially fall off and land on your, uh, on your feet. So safety first, just put that on, that's going to stop that falling off. So next up, we're going to remove the uh, two bolts that hold the, uh, the carrier onto the hub. Uh, so grab the uh, correct size socket, uh, which for the Grand Caravan we're working on today is 18 millimeters, and start getting these cracked off. And as before, just to enable us uh, to undo the other side safely, just going to put that back in, give that a few turns whilst we uh, undo the other one. So just to uh, remove the uh, both bolts and the carrier can be lifted away from the car and we can set that to one side, we're coming, coming back to this later. Yeah, so as I predicted, uh, this uh, rotor has uh, unfortunately stuck itself to the hub, so we're going to have to uh, grab a hammer and uh, give this some gentle convincing uh, that it wants to come off. Uh, what we're going to do is when we refit the, uh, the new uh, rotor in place, we can actually take some measures that are going to stop this happening again. So it's a really, really good tip, as we'll cover when we finally get this off. Uh, but hopefully, when we come to do this brake job again in the future, because we'll take the step that we will, we're not going to have the problem that I'm facing right here. But I'll show you how to do it if yours is jammed on solid like this one is. So grab yourself a decent uh, lump hammer. And what we're going to be doing is tapping this uh, from the back outwards, and then we'll turn it hit it again, turn it, hit it again. So rather than hitting it continuously in one spot, you're trying to uh, release it evenly from the hub. Make sure, as we mentioned before, that you have a uh, one wheel nut in place because it's when this finally does come off, you don't want it to fly off and land on your toes. So that's what we're gonna do. Tap it, rotate it, tap it, rotate it, and keep repeating that process. Carefully remove your uh, wheel nut. And slide, slide off the old rotor. So now the rotor is removed. Before we fit the new one, uh, we want to make sure that we get rid of any uh, bits of corrosion, any little lumps or flakes uh, that might be on here that might stop that new rotor sitting 100% flat on the face of the hub. Obviously you don't want it at a very slight angle. So what we're gonna do is grab a, um, 
a wire brush and we're just going to give this a good wipe around especially around the uh, the inside uh, just around the uh, inside of the uh, the hub circle there and all across the entire face of it and as you go uh, grab some uh, brake cleaner and we're just going to give this a, a bit of a, a clean off uh, as we uh, as we go uh, do you want to be spraying this directly into the centre? It doesn't matter so much on this particular vehicle. Uh, but normally you don't be uh, spraying the uh, brake cleaner obviously into the bearing in the centre. Just onto the, uh, the face to so give it a really good clean. And attack it again with the, uh, with the wire brush. Just do that two or three times depending on the condition until you're uh, happy with it and it looks uh, good and clean and then we can get ready for the next stage. So the next stage this is an optional one. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, this is the little tip I mentioned before that you can do to help prevent the uh, brake rotor getting stuck onto the hub, the problem that we had uh, on this particular car earlier. Uh, I like to use um, copper grease or copper anti-seize, a very common uh, product uh, in car maintenance. Uh, uh, when I do this, uh, however, you can also, of course, use the, uh, the dedicated brake grease uh, product, uh, which we'll be using uh, later in the video as well. Uh, I'm, I like the slightly uh, old-fashioned way of uh, using the, uh, the copper anti-seize. Uh, but either of these would do, be uh, just as good uh, for doing this particular job. So I use a brush when I do this. Uh, the reason being is um, you don't really want to get this stuff on your fingers because you're going to be handling the, uh, the brake pads in a short while. The brake pads uh, faces uh, are slightly absorbent and so that they can actually soak in grease and obviously you don't want that. Uh, what I'm going to do is give a nice layer just around this section here. This is the section that tends to actually corrode and stick the rotor uh, onto the hub. It's going to be fairly generous around there. And in addition to that, I'm just going to give it a, a thin layer all the way over uh, between in each of these uh, each of these gaps. Uh, if you get any onto the uh, the um, wheel bolts there, we'll just uh, wipe that off uh, afterwards before we continue. This is what we're looking to do. It's a nice thin layer all the way around. As I said, this will help in the future prevent that brake rotor getting stuck onto the hub. So next, we'll take a look at the uh, new rotor that's going to be fitted. And what you want to do, if you can, is completely uh, open the, uh, the box up. That's so what we'll use that. And as you can see, what they do is they kind of vacuum pack the, uh, the disc. And uh, inside there, they actually uh, coat it uh, with a very thin layer of grease. And what that does, it stops it uh, getting any surface corrosion whilst it's in storage. Uh, so you open, uh, open it up and it looks lovely, uh, as it does here. It uh, doesn't have any rust on it, but of course we do have a layer of grease and we need to clean that off because we do not want that to be soaking into our brand new brake pads. So that's the next stage is get this open and get this cleaned. So to clean your disc, all you do is you grab your brake cleaner again and give it a good wipe. And you want to do this several times, make sure you get rid of all of the, uh, the grease that's on there. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's a, it really does have a, quite a nasty layer of grease on there. So I'm going to uh, wash off this whole thing using the brake cleaner and likewise uh, around the other uh, side of the centre and also the uh, face of the centre as well. So this whole thing is going to be cleaned using the brake cleaner. So now we just need to flip it over and clean the other side. Now obviously the underside of this had grease on it, that's uh, soaked into this part of the cardboard. So I'm going to use the other part. And again, exactly the same with the brake cleaner, the whole of the face and also the inside. So next up, new rotor, put it carefully onto the hub, with the wheel nut to hold that securely in place and stop that falling off. Perfect. So if you look at the, um, the carriers here, uh, you've got these little metal uh, shims. Uh, we're going to be looking at the pads in just a minute, and we'll be, I'll be showing you the, uh, the new ones that are going to fit in here. These little metal shims, two on uh, either side. So the first thing you want to do is just knock these, uh, knock these out. Like so. So just repeat that uh, for all four. Uh, just gently find a little uh, edge where you can get a bit of leverage on it and just give it a bit of a tap uh, just to pop it out. So we need to get all four of these removed. 
So next I'm going to do a little bit of a clean up just where the, uh, the shims were. Uh, just down in here, get a little bit of a build up of um, dirt in behind them there. So you want to grab your uh, wire brush and we're going to give these uh, a bit of a, a clean up. Uh, get them uh, nice, and, uh, nice and clean in there as well. The other place worth uh, cleaning up is uh, these areas uh, just here as well. Uh, this is where um, it actually attaches onto the hub and you get metal to, to metal. You tend to get a little bit of corrosion just creeping in between them. So again, we can just give that a, a bit of a, a quick uh, wipe over at the same time. Now we've got these looking uh, pretty good. A little bit of brake cleaner. And uh, just give these a final clean up. Careful not to spray uh, brake cleaner onto the, uh, the rubber boots just here. And uh, repeat on the other side. So next, it's always a good idea to uh, remove and have a look at the uh, condition of your slider pins and uh, also uh, lubricate them whilst they're out as well. So we'll take a quick look at the, uh, the basics of it. Uh, what you have is a metal pin, as you'll see in a second when we pull it out. And below that, you see we've got this, uh, this rubber boot. And this rubber boot goes all the way down, as you see. I turn that, that's the bottom of the, uh, the rubber boot there. So to, pull, to uh, uh, release this, all you do is just literally pull it out and it'll pop off like so. And likewise, to remove the, uh, the boot, just give it a bit of a twist and try and remember which end um, went on which end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that down in that direction so I know they went through in, uh, in that direction. So now we'll inspect the condition uh, of the pin and the fixings and then we'll lubricate it and get it back together. So now let's start by uh, getting rid of some of this old grease. This is actually a very nice looking pin. It's nice and shiny and new. This, uh, Either this caliper has been replaced in the not too distant past or they've uh, fitted new, uh, new slider pins. These are in really, really good condition. Now the basis of what we have here on the uh, slider pin, that rubber boot, um, the lip of it sits in this little groove just under the head here. So when you uh, pop this off, you want to make sure that there's no kind of um, corrosion or gunk or anything that's built up in there. If there is, you can get a, a flathead screwdriver and just start to uh, get as much of that stuff out uh, as you can. And then once you're happy with it, that it's looking good, give the, the whole thing a quick blast with the, uh, the brake cleaner and uh, so it's nice and clean and uh, ready to refit. And then we'll look at the, uh, the other elements. So the next thing to look at is again the other end of that rubber boot uh, sits into this uh, this lip right here. So again you want to visually inspect that and if you can see any corrosion or, or crud or dirt in there uh, just get off as, as much as you can and then uh, give that a wipe over with some brake cleaner. When you do the brake cleaner on this side don't spray it into the hole, spray it onto your rag and then use your thumb to work it in uh, around the edge there. And next, grab your torch, uh, shine it in and kind of uh, look down it and visually inspect it. Uh, this one uh, looks like it had a, a good seal on it, so I'm not expecting to see any uh, contaminants in there. If you can see anything that looks unusual, any uh, particles, any um, bits of rust, anything at all, uh, you, that needs to be uh, cleaned out. Uh, this one's not, this one's actually looking pretty good, again, uh, because it had a, a, a nice seal to begin with. Uh, if you do want to, uh, to give it a clean, And finally, just take a look inside your, uh, your rubber boot here. And again, uh, you're looking for any contaminants, crumbs, bits of rubbish that shouldn't be in there. If this holds a good seal, uh, which this one looks to have because it was very clean uh, around the, uh, the edges on both the pin um, and on the um, carrier side, then uh, it's highly likely that this has been successful in, in stopping dirt or and water and things like that getting in there. So, but always worth double checking because that's a good telltale sign. Sometimes they can be uh, full of rubbish if you've had a bad seal. 
So next up we're going to uh, apply some uh, grease to the pin uh, before it gets refitted. Now the uh, grease that you can use, you can either use your uh, kind of dedicated brake grease uh, product um, as we'll be using uh, in just a minute. Uh, but I actually prefer, and again this is just a personal choice, uh, Molly grease which is a lithium based uh, grease and this is designed for things um, such as this and for uh, things like CV joints where you've got kind of a metal on metal. Uh, and also um, rubber boots and things of that nature. It doesn't uh, degrade the rubber. So this is a really good gr grease to use. Uh, but you know, if you haven't got two or three greases to hand as we've been using in this video, you, know, d you can go ahead and just use your uh, standard dedicated brake grease. So just apply a little bit in towards the end. Just wanna get a nice seal as this comes up. Give that a bit of a twist. There squeeze out the, uh, the excess. That should give us a nice seal there. And you want to pull this back as far as you can. Get it in behind the rubber boot if you can. You want to be fairly generous with it but not, uh, not too much. Like so and then we'll just slide that back in. What you'll find is you have the uh, the grease, the excess uh, kind of grease uh, will um, uh, spill out. That's absolutely fine. We'll wipe that off in just a second. So what we want to do is just give it a bit of a push and a twist, and see that's uh, that's popped back on. So I'm just going to wipe away the uh, the excess. If you give that a bit of a, a bit of a twist, that will allow you to wipe the excess off. Uh, but also ensure that you get a, a good seal. So that's kind of the key to, to the slider pins really, is making sure that you get a good seal on, uh, on, both of the, uh, on both of the ends there. So of course, what you want to do is repeat exactly the same process uh, on your uh, other pin. So next, moving on to your new pads. When you're buying your pads, uh, you want to make sure that they come with the, uh, the new set of shims. Uh, you can clean up the, uh, the old ones, and you see these get pretty grimy and horrible over, over time. But you can, you know, using brake cleaner and your wire brush, you can clean these up uh, if you need to reuse them. Uh, they do often break. Uh, one of the ones we've just removed uh, is actually broken. But thankfully, uh, we bought a set of uh, pads that comes with the new shims. You know, you, you probably only pay an extra three or four dollars for a set that comes with the shims as opposed to ones that don't have the shims. So it's uh, well worth uh, doing. So you can see on this particular set, we've got two, uh, two different types of shims. Those are the incorrect ones. These are the correct ones. I assume that these pads can be used on uh, other uh, vehicles as well. They use the same pad with a different type of shim. So that's very important to mention. And the only other thing that I'll mention when you come to choosing your uh, pads, these ones are, I believe, uh, ceramic. Yes, these, uh, these uh, pads are uh, ceramic pads. Uh, this has kind of um, become, I wouldn't say a norm, but uh, it's becoming a much more preferred option. Uh, as you see, we've got the... Uh, ceramic compounds in there and uh, the the main benefit of having ceramic pads is they uh, tend to last a lot longer uh, than um, semi-metallic pads uh, they reckon that they can last up to twice as long uh, that might be a little bit optimistic but even if they lasted one and a half times as long i'm sure you'd be happy with that uh, so that's and also they tend to be uh, a lot quieter you won't get as much uh, brake noise as well and they're probably only an extra you know, five to ten dollars uh, to get a set that are ceramic over semi-metallic. So that's worth bearing in mind uh, when you're shopping for your pads as well. So next one, take a quick look at the, uh, the shims. Uh, obviously these would be the shims for, uh, for both sides of the car. Uh, we need four per carrier, so there'll be eight here. And you'll, you should find this, yeah, there you go, perfect example. Pick the right two up first time, it's unusual. There's two different types, uh, two different sides. So get those uh, sorted into, uh, into uh, piles of four of each. So I'm going to take two of each type, uh, pop those back in the box for use on the other side of the car. And uh, these four are going to be fitted to the carrier. Okay, the way that these uh, work is this, um, you see we've got one little kind of ear that points uh, upwards there. You want that to the, uh, to the outside and also facing up. And you see the, um, the little uh, tab? Uh, on the back there is at a slight angle 
So you want to hook that on first and then just push the, uh, the front of it on nice and firm like so. So that will be that one there. And then obviously on the other side, again, we have the ear to the outside and facing, facing up. So we'll lock that on there and push that in again, nice and tight. And then when you've finished, just have a look from the uh, side profile and make sure that you haven't got any uh, gaps underneath the, uh, the back of it. And again, looking down in here, making sure that it all looks good and it looks like it's seated correctly. So next up, we're gonna lubricate some of the uh, brake components. And this is where your know, ideal product is a dedicated brake grease. You can ignore the, uh, the brand, Dozens of different companies uh, make this, and this is available from any uh, automotive parts supply store. Uh, so you want to get yourself a dedicated brake grease. What we want to do is just apply a thin layer of grease uh, inside the, uh, the new brake shims there. And when you do that, we really want to make sure that you get it right up into the corners. You're only looking for a thin layer. This is just to... Um, uh, help uh, uh, reduce the, uh, the friction to help allow these uh, pads to slide backwards and forwards nice and smoothly. So next we want to uh, refit our carrier. So just to get these uh, hand tight and then we'll uh, get the wrench on them and then we'll get them to the correct factory spec. Another thing to note is uh, when you removed your old uh, bolt, you may have noticed uh, a little bit of uh, blue uh, around the, uh, the tip of it, which would have been like a, a nut lock uh, type product. Uh, again, it, this is a completely optional thing. Uh, this didn't have it and I'm not uh, doing it whilst re, uh, refitting these. Uh, but if you want to, you can just get yourself a bit of nut lock, just put a little dab of it uh, towards the, uh, the end of the thread. And as, as you turn the, uh, the, the bolt, that will uh, work its way around the, uh, the bottom of the thread. Don't use too much. So now you want to grab your torque wrench and we're going to torque this up to the factory spec, which is 100 newton meters, which is 74 foot pounds. So the next job is going to be to retract the uh, piston back into the caliper. Before we do that, uh, we just want to check the uh, condition of the rubber boot, get rid of any dirt or grime that's around it, give that a bit of a wipe off. You don't want to use your, uh, your brake cleaner on this, uh, obviously, because that can perish the, uh, the uh, rubber. But I'm just going to give it a, a bit of a, a brush down, and make sure that there's no splits or tears and it all looks to be in good order. Uh, obviously, if you do have a, a, a tear in this, uh, then you're going to have to uh, you're going to have another job to do because unfortunately you're going to have to uh, replace that seal. But this one's looking good. So rear pistons are generally completely different to uh, front pistons. On the uh, uh, front pistons, you can literally just push that straight back into the body of the, uh, the caliper. Uh, you can't do that generally on uh, rear pistons uh, like this one because this actually has to be uh, wound uh, in a circular motion or screwed back uh, down into the, uh, the body of the piston. And that's why instead of having a completely flat face, we've got these little uh, notches uh, top and bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a, a, a brake rewind tool which can be purchased really cheaply on eBay or Amazon. You're talking about $25, $30 for a complete set and it will do uh, any make or model of car and will last forever. So they're a well worthwhile uh, investment. Uh, you can buy um, small uh, little um, square uh, tools uh, that actually fit onto the end of your wrench and uh, they can be okay sometimes uh, but they're not as good as the dedicated tools and uh, I have had problems in the past where I couldn't get the um, the teeth in the little cube tool to match up 100% and the whole job ended up being a bit of a nightmare. So the, the cube tools are probably half the price, they're probably $15 but it's really worthwhile investing a little bit of uh, money into getting a proper rewind tool. So this is my uh, brake rewind tool. 
Uh, we're actually producing a, a video on uh, how to use these uh, brake rewind tools. If you need a little bit more assistance, uh, be sure to check that video out. We'll have a link for you below. First thing you want to do is find the, uh, the correct plate uh, in your set uh, that fits into your caliper. Let's grab uh, one pair of the pads. Uh, what we have on uh, on these pads, see one of them, we've got this little uh, metal arm here on the rear. And uh, the way this works, this is, a, they call it a squeal arm or, or brake wear a squeal sensor or whatever. And basically what will happen is this brake pad over time obviously will wear down, wear down, wear down, until it get to a point where this metal arm will start to rub on the face of your brake rotor and that will make a uh, like a squeaking screechy noise and when you hear that noise obviously you know that it's time uh, or possibly a little bit over time uh, that your uh, pad should be replaced and should be replaced uh, immediately as soon as you start to hear the squeal so that's kind of an added uh, safety measure so when we uh, fit these uh, back on uh, as you'll see in a little in a little while you've got to make sure that this one goes on the correct side now when you're uh, handling your uh, your pads uh, this, obviously the sensitive side is obviously the, uh, the face of the uh, pad. Remember these are slightly absorbent so if you uh, rub any grease on these uh, that can soak in to that pad and obviously that would be very dangerous and massively uh, reduce the efficiency uh, of this and might even result in the pad not being usable. So you want to be careful uh, not to uh, get any contaminants from your hands uh, onto uh, the faces of these pads. Try and keep them uh, nice and clean. Do not get grease onto these pads. So the, uh, the other thing you can do is get some of your, um, your brake grease. And these little ears, they fit inside uh, those, uh, those shims. Obviously they've got the old, the old shim here, as you'll see in a minute when we fit it, and they actually slide backwards and forwards inside the, uh, inside the shim. Uh, we've greased the, uh, the shim. Uh, I like to add a little bit of uh, grease uh, carefully uh, just to these little um, uh, ears uh, as well. Uh, it's optional, um, some people do, some people don't. Uh, I prefer, uh, don't do it really thick because you don't want a kind of a build up of um, dirt in there, but a nice little thin layer of the grease on, uh, on both of the ears. And the other thing you can do, again this is at an optional stage, in, in this day and age it's not uh, as required as it was in the past because a lot of these um, new pads today, they come with these uh, special backing plates and these are really uh, efficient now at not sticking. Uh, but it used to be common practice to apply a little bit of your grease uh, and a lot of people still do this, including myself, uh, just to the uh, rear faces, uh, yeah, the rear, obviously not the face, the uh, rear um, coating of the, uh, of the pad there. It's just a little thin layer. And basically what that is, is where your, uh, it'll either be, depending on whether it's front or rear, where the piston uh, sits in against the pad, uh, or where the arms uh, of the carrier uh, caliper sit in against the pad. It just helps to uh, stop them uh, binding. And so now we're going to fit our uh, brake pads. Again, be careful not to get this onto uh, your hands or your gloves, because you don't want to transfer it onto the, uh, the faces. So next, you want to offer your pads up, get the, uh, the ears in. Give it a bit of a push and a twist. There we go. I'm just going to uh, wipe my hands off and then we're going to test this. So what you want to do is just test that the pad can slide freely backwards and forwards. Which it can, so that's perfect. I just do exactly the same uh, with the, uh, the pad for the rear and uh, on the uh, application we're doing the Grand Caravan the uh, little squeal arm uh, goes onto the uh, rear of the disc. 
So just before I slide this back on, I'm just going to clean up the, uh, the piston a little bit. Uh, be careful when you do this, you don't want to catch the uh, rubber boot. So now just slide your uh, caliper into place. Make sure that your, uh, your slider pins are pushed in. There we go, perfect. Like so. Next, grab your bolts. Again, if you want to put a little uh, dob of uh, thread lock on the end, uh, nut lock, you can go ahead and do that. up just so they start to go as we can see because everything's nice and clean the uh, little nut here is starting to twist so I'm going to grab the um, the correct size uh, spanner and I'm going to counter hold uh, when we torque this uh, torque this up to spec. So now I'm going to torque these up to the factory spec on the Grand Caravan 35 newton meters or 26 foot pounds. So next, remember we have this uh, ABS cable. Uh, so you just want to uh, pop the little grommets back in, uh, top and bottom, like so. Now, before we refit the wheel, there's one more thing that you can do. Again, this is entirely optional, uh, but this is a really good way of ensuring that your wheel doesn't get stuck on the hub. If you've ever had a wheel get stuck on, there can be an absolute nightmare. This, this particular wheel on this particular car got stuck and it took us about 10 minutes to, uh, to knock it off. It was an absolute nightmare. So we're definitely going to use this little tip uh, on this one here. Again, entirely optional at your own discretion. So what you can do is you can take your, uh, your copper grease again. Just put a good amount of it around the uh, central ring of the hub there. And then also, it's not required on these, these are black hat discs, uh, which means that they have a, a layer of uh, paint on them to uh, help prevent rust. So they probably shouldn't stick uh, as much or corrode as much as normal discs. But making sure, uh, assuming that you have normal discs, just put a very thin layer uh, all the way across the whole layer. Uh, the whole face. Keep it nice and thin, you don't want too much. You can put a good around, uh, amount around the centre there, but then just give it, spread it out nice and thin for the rest of the, uh, the face of the disc. And of course you're only going up to this edge here, you're not going any further, you're not getting anywhere near the face of the disc. So just to that edge right there. So now it's time to refit your wheels, just line it up. Make sure it sits nice and flat, feels good. and tighten your wheel nuts. Next, just screw them in so they become partially tight. And uh, again, when you do this, uh, don't go around in a circle, you need to go in a star pattern so you go directly to the opposite side each time. And finally, before we let it down, just give each of these uh, nuts a half decent crank with your, uh, your wrench or your breaker bar. Again, not going in a circle, following that star pattern. So next, lower the wheels back down to the ground so that the weight is back on the wheel. Grab your torque wrench and we're going to torque the nuts up to the factory specification. On the Dodge Grand Caravan, that should be 138 newton meters, which is 102 foot-pounds. Again, uh, when you do this, 
You want to go in the star pattern, not in the circle. So that's it guys, your brake job is now complete. Uh, now before you uh, jump in your car and sh shoot down the uh, motorway at uh, 70 miles an hour, uh, what you want to do is uh, hop into your car and test the brake pedal. Make sure that it feels nice and firm and take any slack out of that brake pedal that's been created by pushing the uh, uh, pistons back in. So when you first uh, press it, it might be a bit spongy because you're pressing those pistons back out, taking up the slack. Uh, so once the slack's taken out, that brake pedal should feel nice and solid. Uh, assuming that it does, uh, what you want to do is just roll your car backwards and forwards a few times just outside your house and test those brakes at very low speed. Again, make sure that they're tight and they feel correct. Uh, if they do, take your car for a very short um, drive, not on the highway, at low speed. Again, test those brakes and then if you're good to go, you can go on and uh, drive them uh, as normal. Uh, so that's it guys, I hope this has been uh, useful for you. If it has, please support us here at New Wrench by uh, both liking, giving us the thumbs up, the like on this video, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thanks again guys, really appreciate it, and we'll see you in the future on another video.